guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 5 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Air OS on this device and the build date over here shows as 31st March 2021 but right now I have updated it to the latest April build which I'll show you later on which build date is it but let me show you some other things like the download links and stuff are there in this telegram like channel I'll put the link for this particular post in the description box below too so do not worry also the download link XG thread everything will be present in the description and here let me tell you there are two separate versions of iOS. this is a nightly build based on android 11 of course and talking about the two versions here one includes the gapps and one does not and of course as usual i have flashed the gapps included build and it is really easy to flash the iOS on the redmi note 5 pro just make sure you have installed the specific orange fox recovery for the redmi note 5 pro you will get that from the description box below too but here is the flashing guide you will find in the cards or you can find in the description box below too if you want to flash this from the procedure will be similar Similar to the Redmi Note 7 Pro of course and if you're not on the latest firmware you might need to flash the firmware too at first like before flashing the ROM so if you're coming from a different ROM you just wipe cache dalvik system data and flash the firmware then the ROM and you just reboot that's how easy it is to flash the ROS on the Redmi Note 5 Pro and here are the change logs that are mentioned over here and this is how the about section looks like we have the ROS logo up top and the device is mentioned over here and we have the ROS version as 11.0 that is Android 11 of course as you can see let me go back we have the security patch as March 5th 2021 and there is a build date that is 2nd April 2021 the stock kernel here is the Stormbreaker X7 kernel and we have the build number over here in the system panel we do have a system updater so that is great this is the update which I have downloaded you can also use the OTA update over here if you want to no issues whatsoever you can use this particular updater app and you can flash your like update through this updater that is amazing also you can like do manually flashing if you want to you, you will find the link for the guide in the description box below too so do not worry let me go back from here we have the developer options because i have enabled that and the stock keyboard here is gboard now the gestures and stuff are there but that is inside these buttons and gestures but before that let me show you the stock launcher first so as you can see we get the arrow s launcher by default over here and on this launcher if you look at the settings of this launcher there are a plethora of things like the allow edit option then the notification dots then we have the add app icons to the home screen then show google app option then show search bar option then the icon packs if you want to install any icon packs you can and you can also disable the suggestions so this is one thing that i like over here and we have the hidden and protected apps this is for the app lock over here i have locked the telegram app i'll show you that later on we have the notification gestures double tap gestures and swipe down to clear all reasons and yeah that's pretty much it but the good thing is we do have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen so you can just double tap here and as you can see the phone goes to sleep now talking about the fingerprint scanner speed here as you can see the fingerprint scanner speed is blazing fast no issues whatsoever let me show you one more time and as you are noticing the fingerprint scanner here is like blazing fast I have no complaints with the fingerprint scanner very reliable and accurate fingerprint scanner here now talking about the lock tap as you can see i have protected the telegram app and right now as you can see if i am opening the telegram app it asks me for the fingerprint or the pin so i can just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks well i tapped somewhere else so that is why it was showing red for the first time but yeah it unlocks super fine every time no issues whatsoever widgets and stuff in the home screen is working fine to the left of the home screen we still find the google's discover page Swiping down gets you to the quick settings panel here and swiping up gets you to the app drawer. You can search for any particular app over here of course, no issues with that and you will get the Google search over here on the top. You can also search with the lens and stuff over here with the like home screen Google widget. As you can see it opens the Google like lens if I tap here on the camera logo. This is great that this actually works. You can also voice search from here of course right now let me show you the quick settings panel this is how it looks like i have added a couple of toggles let me show you we do have the android 11 screen recorder and with this you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time so that is great and there is also the reboot toggle with this you can directly reboot to recovery from here you don't have to tap or hold the power button so that is great if your power button is broken or something you can use this feature also there is a dark theme and stuff but i cannot find the fps info overlay or something so that's how it is i'm not really sure if it's there but yeah in the quick toggle edit option there are a couple more toggles but yeah i could not find the fps info toggle here 
Talking about the other things like the Vaulty calling and stuff, those should be working fine, although I do not have a SIM card in the device yet. Right now, let me show you the battery settings. Here is how it looks like and if you tap here, you will see the full battery usage and this is how the battery section looks like. You can scroll down to get the battery percentage on the status bar. Then there is the battery charging light. You can enable the battery light in do not disturb mode. That's for the notification light. And we have the smart charging, then the battery saver, battery manager, etc. And it also shows the battery temperature over here. You can also change the scale for that to Fahrenheit if you want to. And we have the screen on time, then the last full charge. And even fast charging and stuff, I have tried it with my power bank. That is working fine. Or even if you have an 18 watt fast charger, that should be working fine here. And talking about the battery life, battery life over here, I have got about five to six hours of screen on time. So no issues whatsoever with the battery life here. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have the dark theme and you can change the color bucket option. If you enable it, let me show you. By default, this looks like a little bit grayish background, but you can also use the other options like the Raven Black if you want the background to be completely dark. Of course, it has an IPS display, so it won't be completely dark, but yeah, it shows complete black over here. Let me turn off the dark theme. You can also schedule the dark theme, so that's great. Nightlight option is there. Adaptive or auto brightness is there. In the styles and wallpapers, let me show you. You can customize the theme, which I have done, but let me show you by customizing another one. We have these many fonts over here, like these five fonts. And also we have these many icons for the status bar. And then we have the choose color option. So you can choose any particular color from here. As you can see, plethora of colors are there. I have been using it with this one over here. You can also go with YOLO or something if you want to. So that's how you customize the theme. Now in the wallpapers, this is how it looks like. We have this kind of AeroS wallpaper by default, which I'm using. So it looks great. And in the clock options, we have these many like clocks for the always on display, if you may call that, or for the lock screen. And here in the lock screen settings, this is really interesting that we still have the lock screen charging info over here. Then we have the CRT or scale animation for the screen of animation. Then we have the advanced settings and then we have the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner. So even if I reboot the device, I can directly unlock the device with the fingerprint scanner itself. I do not have to enter my pin every time I reboot the device. That is a really convenient feature for me and I love it. And we have the double tap to wake over here. Then enable blurs option is there. So if I pull down the quick settings panel, as you can see, the background gets blurred. Looks very beautiful. You can disable it if you want a little more performance in the UI, but I love the look of it. And we have the font size, display size, etc. customization. And even the DPI customization is there. Now from the weather settings, you can enable weather for the lock screen and stuff if you want to. Then inside status bar, we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. You can enable even the vaulty icon and stuff over here. So yeah, a lot of icons are there. Now talking about sound settings, this is how it looks like. By the way, this is how the volume panel looks like. And you can expand the volume panel. Let me show you from here. As you can see, you can expand the volume panel. So it looks cool. And we have the show volume panel on the left side too. If you want the volume panel to appear on the left, you can do that. And we have the vibrate for calls. Then if you scroll down, we have the dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound, charging vibration, etc. And inside me sound enhancer, we have the me audio deck, of course. But with youth edition, the sound quality via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well is great and no issues whatsoever that I have faced. And these many presets that you get for the me audio deck. Let me scroll down. We have the security settings and here we also have the face unlock. So that is great. Let me show you by setting it up. So this is how the face unlock setup wizard looks like. So you click on setup, then next, and then you put your face in front of the camera or the front camera and then click done and it's done. So right now, let me try with the face unlock. And as you can see, the face unlock speed is like blazing fast. Even if you compare it with any other 2021 device, as you can see, the face unlock speed is not bad at all. It works 100% of the time and it unlocks very fast, I would say. Now, let me talk about the stock camera. Well, you get the Google camera, go here. Now, you might have some mixed feelings with it, but I have really good experience with the Google camera Go edition. I really like it like better than the older kind of Google camera. And I would say yes, if ANX camera was there by default, that would have been better. But here I am not like disliking it or something. The Google Camera Go is pretty good for me and the quality of like normal pictures are super fine, no issues whatsoever. I'll like, give you an example by this picture. And here I would say the picture quality is great and you also have the face enhanced mode and stuff. Then we have the flash, then timer, grid option, etc. And even if you're taking pictures with the front camera, there is also the face detaching option. So you can use that if you want some beautification mode kind of thing. And then we have the portrait mode also. So you can take a portrait mode picture, I would 
would say picture quality should be pretty good and here in the video settings this is how you can take the videos and it shows for how long you can take the videos and stuff even for photos it shows how many photos you can take with the storage you have left so yeah this is great that we get the google camera go by default over here on this rom now in arrow in terms of customizations you have to visit this buttons and gesture settings so yeah let me show you the gesture settings first so let me show you the quickly open camera first so you can double tap the power button anytime to quickly open camera if you have set a default camera and in the activate torch option we have the long press power button to toggle torch so that is great let me go back we have the system navigation gestures and in the gesture navigation settings we have the gesture bar length customization so that's great let me go back we have the two button and three button customization but let me tell you there is no option to increase the thickness of this gesture bar let me go back we have the prevent ringing then the swipe to screenshot is also there as you are noticing and there is the share edit and delete option although i cannot find the scrolling option over here for the screenshots but that's fine in the power menu we have the device controls and sensitive content but the advanced reboot is not there that is like in the button settings here we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar so i can double tap anytime on the status bar to make the phone sleep this works fine no issues whatsoever now in the buttons we have the enable advanced restart as you can see so let me show you from the power menu this is how the power menu looks like we have the google smart home kind of controls over here so that's great and i can turn on the lights and stuff if you have noticed there is a little bit of more light over here right now but i turned it off so yeah google smart home kind of lights are working fine with the power menu and we have the like advanced reboot over here if you tap restart right now it shows directly rebooting option to recovery or fast boot or you can just reboot the system or just a hot reboot over here is also present now in the power menu action you can enable the screenshot screen record etc options over here if you want to let me go back we have the invert layout then the playback control and the volume wake also so that was it about the customizations over here of the arrow OS. now talking about the smoothness of this rom i have never faced any kind of issues over here with the app opening speed or something the like speed over here overall everything opens super fast no issues whatsoever that i have faced i would say the experience of like app opening here is super fast and even for gaming this rom could be really really good and the ram management is also great this is how the recent panel looks like by the way you can take a screenshot and clear all the notifications from here of course you can go to the split screen mode and stuff from here and as you can see it is very very smooth experience over here you can switch between apps just like this so yeah all the app stays in memory no issues whatsoever and here are the android and geekbench score of this rom if you're worried about the performance now talking about some misc things like the ir bluster and stuff as you can see over here if you notice if i tap here as you are noticing the ir bluster is actually working fine so no issues with the ir bluster that i have had and the ir bluster works 100 percent of the time no issues and if you're worried about banking apps yes you can use banking apps like google pay right out of the box here as you can see it passes all the safety net tests so that means banking apps are not an issue over here on the air os by default now talking about google assistant yes you can bring google assistant just by swiping from these corners and as you are noticing google assistant is working fine and also with the voice trigger let me show you hey google as you can see the google assistant also works with the voice trigger let me try one more time hey google as you are noticing again google assistant even with the voice trigger is working fine so not an issue with even the voice trigger so yeah arrow os has been one of the best roms for me for most of the devices and i have never faced huge issues with arrow os only once that i have faced one issue with the fingerprint and stuff with the arrow os that was one single update for the redmi k20 pro but later it was fixed amazingly well and i would say arrow os has been one of the best roms out there for all the devices right now and even for the redmi note 5 pro it's no different the arrow os is amazing and if you want to like flash it and have a daily driving experience on the ROS, you definitely can. And overall experience of the ROS is amazing over here, even on the Redmi Note 5 Pro or the Redmi Note 7 Pro or the Redmi K20 Pro right now. So yeah, one of the best ROMs out there that is ROS based on Android 11 in my personal opinion. Give me feedback in the comment section and share this video with your friends if you feel like. And subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Sita from Katie and Dick signing off for today. And I'll be catching you guys in the next one. By the way, do not forget to hit the like button if you like this video. Bye bye now.